The Senate has confirmed the appointment of Yemi Kasodu as the Central Bank of Nigerian Governor and four others as Deputy Governors of the APX Bank. They were all confirmed on Tuesday following a screening by the upper legislative body. The Deputy Governors who were confirmed are Emen Usoru, Mohamed Sani Abdullahi, Dantijo Philip Ikiazu, and Bala Bello. Before their confirmation, the nominees had answered questions on matters related to the economy and other policies. During the screening, Kasoda promised to embrace compliance, assuring that under his leadership, the APS Bank would remain apolitical. Katusodo's confirmation comes weeks after President Bola Ahmed Tinubu nominated him as the acting CBN governor and four others as his deputies. He assumed office last week, replacing the acting governor of the CBM, Folash Odun Shunubi. The recent appointment followed the suspension and resignation of Godwin Emefele as the Apex Bank boss. The Delta Bond began his reign in 2014, but got a major backlash owing to some of his policies and the Naira redesign. In a total departure from the former, the one-time Citibank chairman assured the lawmakers that bridges of the CBN Act, as recorded by his predecessor, will not be the, under his case and under his administration. But the big question and the big story for today is what direction should he, being the new CBN governor and his team, take to reposition the economy and most especially the Naira that seems to be on a free fall? And would he be allowed to have a free hand in running of the Apex Bank? Well, these and more as it concerns the confirmation of the CBN governor is what this edition of the Big Story is all about. And that is the confirmation of the new CBN governor, more like setting the agenda. And that's what we're having as a major discourse today on the Big Story. We're talking about that con final confirmation of the CBN governor yesterday with four of his deputies. And uh, well, what role should he, or rather what direction uh, should he take to reposition uh, the Naira that seems to really be on a free fall, the inflation that is put at 25.08% and others. Well, that's what's taking center stage on the show today. And to truly help us talk about it, it's no other person but our administrator and also economics. And we're talking of no other person but ambassador. I enjoy putting ambassador. Raymond Ube Orogun. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning, Michael Ray. Thank you for having me. Now, here. first of all, before we go into setting the agenda, which I know a whole lot of persons will love to hear, I well, talk about possible policies or direction the Apex Bank would need to be, um, take under the watch of no other person but him. I want us first to look at the man, Olayemi Michael Kasodo, as a former chairman of the Citibank, one time commissioner for Lagos State Ministry of Economic Planning and Budget, and he has over 30 years' experience in the financial and development sector. Now, do you see him as the right man for the job, especially at this time? I'm talking of no other but the man, Olayemi Michael Kasodo. Well, um, thank you, uh, Mr. Ray, for having me here today. Now, when you talk about the man, um, Olayemi, when you look at his qualification, okay. he is fit for the job. When you look at his um, pedigree, he is fit for the job. But the problem, or rather the challenge, is that the situation is not all about the man. <laughs> we, we have seen uh, people who are also qualified, people like um, Sanusi, yeah. you know, people like uh, Soludo, mm -hmm. even the MFLA. So. These guys were qualified. But the truth is that along the line, the job swallowed them up. Mm. So what swallowed others up are still there. And I assure you, if those things are not attended to, which we shall um, yeah. uh, talk, uh, talk about mm -hmm. later, those things are not attended to. I tell you, the job is not all about the man alone. Well, anyway, thank you for saying that, but on reminding you, you've talked about his experience. 
and that might be a plus going forward sure uh, in his ability to reposition an apex bank that seems to be having one of his lowest ebb uh, looking at uh, what happened or transpired under his predecessor but anyway I, I want us to leave that as much as you feel uh, he's the man for the job but you hope all those um, issues that seem to always be there uh, be devil in that very sector is not taken care of uh, uh, well it might not really be all about the man but I want us to still remain with the man and uh, what I want us to now come to look at is the screening and final confirmation of him and four of his deputies just yesterday and um, I, I want us to look at the screening itself because I monitored uh, the screening closely and one of the questions that caught my attention during that screening yesterday um, I know it was for several hours, um, himself and his deputy were screened. I, I want us to look at one of uh, the questions that was thrown to him by no other, but the senator representing Zafra West, Abdulaziz Yari, Yari yeah. when he asked the CBN governor whether the CBN is empowered by law to make profit. That's the major question he asked yesterday. That, that question that caught my attention all through the screening. And to further stick on that question. I know the Senate President himself, Gus Will Akpabio, Akpab re-echoed it by asking the CBN boss why the CBN is running a parallel government from the federal government. Basically, he directed the question of should the Apex Bank be involved in direct business like agriculture, road construction, tourism, moving up to purchase of drugs and others in a bid to make profits. So should the CBN be directly involved in all of these business and as it was under the case under Godwin Mefele, is the CBN out to make profit? Is that one of his major mandates? It's a question. Okay, well, um, making profit is relative. In what sense? Now, if I am doing anything for the government mm -hmm. or if I am manning any of the government um, agencies, okay. Well, the federal government uh, require me to be productive and uh, bring back profit to them. Mm -hmm. So that is why I'm, I said making profit is relative. Okay. If I am progressive in what I am doing, it is a kind of being profitable to yeah. the government. Yeah. Now, but for the, for the CBN mm -hmm. to get directly involved mm -hmm. In, in the business in, of making profit. Yes, in business of making profit, in importation, mm -hmm. in, 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 in production, in, in, in agriculture. In buying they even were, they even I, I, were I busy buying and they were, they, they, they were They were acting, they were acting on their own, which is the, which is the trying to be autonomous. On a parallel government. And running a parallel government. But for me, I think funding would have been better for them which is what they ought to, to, to do. So, uh, 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 and if they even want to do that, they ought to seek approval from uh, certain authorities and mm. certain people that are, you know, uh, heading them. Mm. So I, I believe, I believe that is a sort of uh, distraction. Yeah, because that, that's where I was going to. Because is it not a form of distraction yeah, that they will be involved in business itself? And, and direct feel, business. Direct business. Itself. And do you feel that it won't affect their affairs? And, and many, make, make it look as if the CBA was managed badly under the administration of uh, Godwin and Methodist. Because that's the question. And does it not even... Is it not a violation of the CBN Act in 2007? Because uh, look at well, it. I have not come to understudy the Act okay. properly. Yeah. I have not come to understand the art properly. The, the CBA should know better for now, unless mm. I go back to yes. do my check. Mm. But the truth is that when they did that, what was the resultant effect? Okay. When we look at the resultant effect, and we see that it does not it actually improve the economy. Yeah. Let us assume. Okay. I have not looked into that. Yeah. But when we look at it, it improved the economy. Mm. The CBN doing business mm. at the long run improved the economy. Mm. That means it should be a new dimension mm. to follow. So mm. what they need to do is to find a way to to make it right. All right. Let me be, but because if why, it is why not act, among their job, their, their description, job description. Because if, if you look at the, a if you look at the CBN Act 2007, it mandates them to always take instructions 
especially from the, the upper chamber, uh, yeah. the National Assembly, yes. and, and, and which normally does its oversight. But, but in all they did, the business transactions they did, they went on their own to do it. But apart from that now, is it not even funny that under the watch of uh, Godwin Emefele, a CBN governor, many businesses folded up because of either lack of funds to run them and CBN being a competitor who always want to look business first. So was it not like placing the cart before the horse? Because basically what other banks, Apex banks in other countries does is to fund those businesses for them to prosper. But when you now have the CBN doing the job and the funds and the interest rates that they kept high for many years, 11% was what they did in 2022. But only this July, they increased it to 18.14% interest rate. And it stifled a whole lot of businesses. So was it not in direct conflict with why they were mandated to perform their duties there? Now, from your description, it is. It is. But let you, you made mention of, um, of uh, businesses losing down. Yeah. Now, it is not uh, uh, all because uh, CBN went M most into, certainly. Most into certainly. business. That's that why those businesses are mm. folding up. Mm. Like I told you before, mm. when we progress, we begin to look, look into, at some of those uh, look major, at, yeah. Yes, why those businesses mm. uh, are folding mm. up. But as for me, the CBN going directly into business, business mm. not funding businesses. I think that is um, a bit of distraction to their mandate. Okay. And uh, they ought not to have done so unless there is a direct issue mm. from, the, from the controlling body, from the upper... Mm. Uh, the uh, yes, so I think that is uh, what I have to oh, Okay, say okay. now re regarding some of the action of his predecessor, well, the new CBN governor yesterday assured the lawmakers that um, there will be zero tolerance for the abuse of compliance. So let's leave that matter as it is, because that's what he assured them. And uh, le let's move forward. Now, one of the first major problems, because that's what we need to look at, and that's the reason we're having this discussion, we're setting the agenda and looking at the challenges that will also accompany uh, those uh, 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 agendas that we're going to set. Now, one of the first major problem or challenge that uh, Mr. Kasodo needs to deal with is the free fall of the Naira. As of 12 midnight yesterday, the Naira to the dollar at the power market is 1,000 naira. Yes. Hmm. When we felt we'll never be here, funny enough, we are here now. 1,000 naira to the dollar. Mm. That's serious. Hmm. Well, anyway, sorry enough of, of, of that already. Um, what should this 66-year-old governor do and do fast to help halt the for, further fall of the naira? Okay, now, let us look at what what had led to the fall to the fall that is what we should look at okay then when we look at what had led to the fall of naira then we begin to prefer solution to them okay let, let, let's do that now number one what has led to the fall of, of naira. naira simple in simple term simple description it is because of scarcity of dollars that has led to the fall of Naira. You look at a situation whereby the people demanding for the demand for dollar is higher than the supply of the dollar. Of the dollar. So you discover that there is a high pressure on people to get the dollar. But you look at our reserve the dollar is depleting and you look at you look at the backlog the backlog of the demand for dollar you discover that we have about uh, about 10 billion dollar dollars backlog yes manufacturers manufacturers who have put in to get dollar to buy uh, raw materials then we we have parents who want to pay their children's school fees they have put in to buy dollar you have people who want to go for medical trips they have put in to buy dollar you have investors they are put in to buy dollar yet the dollar is not there so you discover that 10 billion first is 
10 billion pressure is on the dollar. Hmm. Then come to look at our reserve. Hmm. Our reserve is depleting, is depreciating, is reducing on daily basis. What is our reserve? Our reserve is about 33 billion dollars or so now. And now we have backlog of about 10 billion. 10 billion. So we're just talking about 23 billion. So we're just talking about 23 uh, 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 billion dollars. Billion dollars. And in fact, there is a report, there is a report from one of the financial, foreign financial uh, uh, system that we actually have about 3 billion dollars in our, in our reserve, which the federal government uh, has come up to the to, to, to bond. You get what I'm saying now? Then you look at our external uh, debt. You look at our external debt. How much is our external debt? How much is our internal debt? Put them together. It's about $108 billion. Then you discover that our debt is even higher than our foreign reserve. Our foreign reserve. So there will be problem. And look at investors, uh, the, the, foreign, the foreign direct investors, people are not coming to invest. People are not, the foreign remittance, people are not bringing in money anymore. Then we are not even earning in, 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 in petrol. We are not earning in petrol because the, our, our production has reduced to about $1.2 dollars to about 1.2 uh, 1 million barrels, barrels per, day. per day. So you discover that all the indications that are supposed to bring in foreign reserve, none is performing well. And there is a high pressure on the dollar, on, the dollar, on people to get the dollar. So what do you expect? Naira will continue to fall unless all these indices are put in place. Then as we progress, I will also we begin to explain why these things are like this. Well, anyway, that's what we'll try to progress ourselves with or deal with later, because you do know that's why we're having this discussion. We're talking about the final confirmation of uh, no other person but uh, Olayemi Michael Kasodo yesterday and his four deputies and uh, what likely agenda or likely direction should uh, he and his deputies take to ensure that we also deal with the issue of uh, inflation, but most especially uh, the falling Naira that as it stands 12 midnight uh, yesterday night, or rather, um, the dollar was put at 1,000 Naira. Many felt it would never happen, but hello, wake up, the reality is here. Is here yes. But anyway, as much as we're dealing with the realities, we're still mm. looking at all with that concerns, um, not just that, but what direction this new uh, CBN governor, 66, year, 66 years old, a CBN governor uh, should take to help change the narrative. But we'll talk more about it and we'll talk indeed to look at those issues, but we need to go on the break now. And when we come back, more discussion centered today on The Big Story. <laughs>